What's up fam? So I've gotten some questions about how I'm time stretching these sample loops inside a band lab. So I'll walk you through that process today. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new project inside of bandlab.com. We're on desktop today, so that's what we're working on. And the reason why I'm on desktop is because it's pretty much a drag and drop feature where you drag and drop the loops straight onto your timeline and band lab. And it's, it's a little bit easier than on iOS. So most of the time, you'll be getting your sample loops from somewhere like Splice or um, Sound Bible or you know Looperband.com. And for the most part, most of those samples are usually pretty well titled and well labeled with the beats per minute and the key of the of the track. But since I am a loop designer, I'm going to show you some of the techniques from some of the loops that I've built. So I've already exported these loops into a file on the desktop. So when you start up a brand new project in BandLab, the first thing you want to do is you want to know the key and tempo of the loop that you're going to be dragging in. So first off, we're going to drag in just the drums for right now. So if you notice, when we drag in the drums, I usually like to set my... Um, my project to loop at four to eight bars. And since I know this is an eight bar loop, I'm gonna zoom in here and you'll notice that this eight bar loop does not line up at the eight bar mark. So even when you play it back with the metronome, you'll notice that the beat just sounds off. just way off and what we'll do first and this is something that you have to get into a habit of every time you bring a new loop in is setting the tempo of your project to the loop that you're bringing in so since we know that this loop was made at 140 beat beats per minute we're gonna set our tempo to the same exact beats per minute inside a band lab this way when we drag our loop onto our timeline it'll just line up perfectly Make sure it's all the way back to the very beginning of your track and you can see that it has a little bit of tail end make your necessary adjustments right here and uh And in this way, when we adjust the tempo, let's go to 158. BandLab will automatically ask us if we want to adjust the audio regions that it, that are existing on the timeline. And we just hit adjust and it snaps it to the adjustment. So let's go back to 140. I'm going to hit adjust again. Snaps it back. So next what we're going to do is bring in a melody loop. So let's try this one. And since we already know that this is made this was made at 140 beats pm, our project is already at 140 beats per minute. So let's drag it to the timeline, pull it all the way to the beginning. Let's cut off that tail end. I usually like working with eight bar loops because it's just a, a lot easier to work with. Um, I can just drag and drop or uh, copy and paste when I want to make things longer. So now that we dragged our melody loop on, we want to establish the key of the project so if you can't find out the key to the melody what you're going to do is try and go to the virtual instruments and then we're going to pull up our piano and uh, we can actually set this piano to a, a major scale minor scale um, usually most melodies are made up a major or minor scale so let's check out the major scale There is some slight music theory involved in this, but you don't really have to worry about that with this with this feature. So let's play along with our loop. 
And you can notice right away that that's not the, the key that this loop is made in. So, so if you don't know the key, just go ahead and play around with the different scales. And um, once you finally figure it out, I know that this was made in A-flat major. You can just kind of match up your key that way. So once you found out the key, you can establish the project at that key scale. We're going to go to A flat major. So now what you've just done is just establish the key of the project overall. So anytime you change the key scale in the future, any of the melodic loops that you've already dragged and dropped onto the timeline will change in key as well. So if we want to go from A, A um, major to E major, what we have to do is adjust. So if you want to bring in another melodic loop, let's say at the same exact key, you're going to have to, just like the beats per minute, you're going to have to go back to the original, um, original key first before dragging in that loop. So you're just gonna adjust that and then bring in your second melodic loop. Again, make sure it's dragged all the way to the front. So you'll notice that this loop is actually missing a chord at the very beginning, so. I don't know, something happened within the export of that, um, of that loop. So we can go ahead and place our playhead on a chord that we want to copy and paste there. Um, and then right click it and slice it by the playhead. And do that again slice it here and then we can just copy copy this and then place our playhead at the beginning where we want to paste it and paste so that is the wrong chord <laughs> uh, so we're going to undo all that and then copy and paste this chord slice Slice again, copy this, and paste it here. And then once again, if we want to change the key to, let's say, B major, we're just going to adjust. And even if we want to change the tempo to 153, adjust. Now we could have just uh, used a sampler to bring in these loops and just drag and drop our loops onto a sampler and just use the sampler to bring in these loops. But let me tell you why we didn't. So, the pad sampler in BandLab is really good for like drums and one shots and stuff like that, but it's not really all that great for melodic loops and stuff. So, even when you want to pitch up the sample. It'll bring it up in pitch, but it won't really uh, manipulate the time stretch. The, it won't sync it in time with your project.
so yeah, it just won't match. Um, it just won't match the time signature of your overall track. So we just don't use the sampler for trying to manipulate those sounds. So if we want to bring that track in and if we bring it in at, at its original state, it's going to remain that way. It's not going to automatically sync in BandLab. <laughs> It's not going to match your project at all. So let's let's go ahead and delete that. We're going to go back to the original key, which was, what did we say? A flat major. Yes, adjust that. And then bring it back to 140 beats per minute. Yes, adjust. And then once again, let's bring our... Bring our file. And then now we can change it. Let's change it to B. And, and adjust once again. So at this point, you can really manipulate it how you want to and do whatever you want to it. And you can actually end up exporting it. Just remember that when you're bringing in new samples, make sure that the tempo of your project and the key line up with the sample that you're bringing in. And then from there, you can just adjust it the way you want to. So that's pretty much how I use the time stretching feature inside of BandLab. So if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. If you have any suggestions or any anything you would like to, to see more, let me know those in the comments too. If this was helpful to you, go ahead and hit that like button and consider hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, we'll be doing more videos just like this. So make sure you hit the notification bell too so that you don't miss out when I post anything in the future. Once again, fam, I'm Brandon Rico. Thanks for rocking with me. Thanks for rocking with the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.